So today, again, um, we, we, um, we are on a series break. And the title of the message for today, the title of the message is, What Does It Take to Build the Lord's House? Right? Uh, just a minute. There you go. What does it take to build the house of the Lord? That's the, that's the exact title. Hmm. All right. What does it take to build the house of the Lord? So we are um, going to re be um, discussing um, um, from the book of Haggai. All right. So if you had a uh, um, if you're, you're not familiar with that book, that is in the Bible. All right. So Haggai is like the fourth, uh, fourth book um, before the end of the Old Testament. All right. So um, for those who are, who are taking notes, we have three points for today. And um, we have some tweetables right, in, our, in our discussion today. So watch out for those, for those who are on Twitter. Right. Meron pa bang may Twitter sa atin dito? I don't think, I haven't seen any one of you in Twitter. All right. So, um, and, and um, I want you to put your attention on verse 2. That speaks the Lord of hosts saying, The people says the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. So what is the reason for this? To give you a background, this was after Nehemiah. Nehemiah, remember, he built the walls, right? And he was burdened. So Nehemiah was a butler, right? And he was burdened that he sees that, that they are enjoying all that. But he was bothered that, that Jerusalem was unprotected. And remember during those times, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the way it was is that a group of, um, a group of uh, people will actually attack another group of people. And even when Israel was being, uh, was being established, that's what happened. They had to actually, you know, they had to fight for their lands, right? So um, not too long ago, we, we had become familiar with that, you know, with the feudal system and all. And even Japan had the same thing with the shogunate and all that stuff, right? But during the time, so Israel was already conquered by Babylon. And then Babylon, uh, you know, the uh, Medo-Persia. Right? And so during this time, it is the time of King Darius. And so Nehemiah was able to build, was able to build the walls. And Israelites started coming back home to Israel. So they started settling in, settling in, but there is one thing that they had neglected. And what is that? Right? In everything from the, um, when the Lord God had actually um, saved Israel, take, took them out of Egypt. Do you know what is the first thing that they built? Always. The first thing that they set up, remember they are nomads. They were traveling, right? And how do they know that they're going to travel? Because the Lord tells them to go when he says them to go. And the Lord God tells them to stop, then they stop. Do you know when they stop, the first thing that they need to, to, to put up? The tabernacle. The tent of meeting, right? That is actually the precursor to the temple. So the people of the Lord God somehow forgot that during the time. So they were able to build the walls, but they forgot to build God's house, the temple. And what did it mean for Israel during the time? And what does it mean for us today, right? And I'm telling you, um, as I was going here, I am nervous, right? I, I've, never, I've never been a, a for, quite a, for quite a while. Some people are actually asking me, Pastor, do you still get nervous when you are, when you are speaking? I said at the, at the start, but it's very rare that I'll be nervous, you know, thinking of that I'm going, to, um, I'm going to share a message. Because this, today, I pray... Right? I'm actually praying that we have more people who are going to come today. 
And the people that I want to actually be, that I prepared the message for, they are not here. This is a sayang Lord, kinamaan sana sila. Now, uh, but kidding aside, right? I pray that you are going to embrace this. Because this is not just talking about a certain period in Israel's life. But the principles that we are going to glean in this message and how we are going to apply this, it is going to affect you, your family, your subgroup, our church, and not only that, your community, and not only that, even your future generations. And that's our message for today. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we come to you. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord God, for you are indeed the God, Lord God, who had created us. You are the source, Lord God, of all life and the source of everything that we have. And Lord God, Lord, you are also, Lord God, our sustainer. You hold all things together. And not only that, you are also, Lord God, our Savior, the only wise God, our Savior. And today we come. Again, Lord, asking you, cleanse our hearts, Lord God, from anything that will hinder, Lord God, your word, the way we are going, Lord, to receive your word. And again, Lord, you told us, Lord, that we should not just, Lord, be hearers of your word, but doers of the same. So today, Lord God, we are not just asking, Lord God, that we, we are praying, Lord, that your word is going, Lord, to bless our souls, our spirits, our hearts. But much more than that, Lord God, that we pray that you're going to also, Lord God, bless our hands that we might, Lord God, be able to apply what you are going, Lord, to tell us, Lord God, today. Lord, help us, Lord, to be excited. I pray, Lord God, again, steer our hearts the way you had steered the hearts, Lord God, of Zerubbabel. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, this happened in the second year of King Darius in the sixth month on the first day the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah. This people says the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. So number one, point number one, building God's house should be our priority. Building God's house should be our priority. Again, so we see it here, these people, they say, these people says, the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Right? So God's house equals temple during the time. Today, that is God's kingdom. Because there's the Lord God says, it does not really dwell in houses built with hands. But rather, where does he dwell? He dwells in the hearts of those who believe in him. You and I are now the temple of the Holy Spirit. So where is the temple? Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. That's the church. So if you're going to ask me, does the Lord God want us to, to build, you know, buildings? Of course. But it should not replace what the Lord God is telling us to do. So what is God's temple today? You and I are the, the spirit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The temple of the Holy Spirit. What, that's what I meant. Right? So here in Matthew 6, 33, look at what the Lord God says. Seek ye first, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What the meaning of it, there are so many times that we just talk about seek first the kingdom of God, period. We forget that it says and his righteousness. So what is the meaning of his righteousness there? The meaning of that is what is right before God, not what is right in our own eyes. Right? It's a kingdom. If there's a kingdom, there's a king. You know, when the because we are so used to, to democracy, right? We don't like monarchy. But monarchy in the olden times, especially during this time, the king has all the say, right? In the Philippine, in our, in our Filipino context, remember? Ang sinabi ng hari, hindi mababali, right? So what the king says, you cannot break it. <laughs> so, <laughs> you cannot break it. So um, here... So the Lord God is telling us, the, for, seek first the kingdom of God. I like the King James Version better. It says, but seek ye. Right? Because there's that, that word there, it implies that you. Right? It's not something that, you know, as a group only. But this becomes personal. 
Right? It is personal. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Right? And so it's not coming up with your own ideas, but rather you seek the ideas of the Lord God, what he's saying, and then follow that. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And listen, the next one. And all these things shall be added unto you. Right? What is the meaning of that? Because there's a lot of things that we prioritize over God's kingdom. Right? Can you give me some? That our tendency is to put them first. Come on. Money. Money, money, money. What else? Work, 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 work. What else? Family. We are family. What else? Huh? Chores. All right. Boyfriend. Ayun tatlo. Joboy Ichi. And then Joboy JJ and Gab. Boyfriends daw. All right. Right? And, and, you know, relationships, our work, there's a lot. And even rest. I know people who would prioritize gym. Yeah, totoo. Totoo, I know. You know, somebody actually answered me that way. Bakit wala ka sa cell group? Ang sagot sa akin, nag-gym po ako, pastor. Gusto ko, gusto ko sana buhatin eh. Ipalibag. Para makita niyo kung ano pa kinabang nung gym niya. Right? So, you know. <laughs> right? So, what else? What else? There are so many things. Do you know that the Lord cares for those? The Lord actually, who gave you money? Your boss. Right? But you remember, yeah, I, I, was, I was actually thinking about it again. It's, it matches. Right? You remember... Holy Spirit, can I <laughs> right? Remember, the one who gave you your job, that is from the Lord God. Does He want you to perform well in your job? Yes. He even told you, even if your boss is not really well, think that you are doing this for God. Your 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 real, real boss is God Himself. Does He want us to take care of our families? Amen. Do you know my priority as a ministry is my family? Right? And of course, if the Bible says, if the, I cannot control my kids, of course, that's minors, right? If I cannot, I don't have any control over my kids, how can I have control over the church? Right? I cannot lead the church if I don't lead my family. And he even said to me, you know, that my first priority is my spouse. It's true. Happy wife, happy life. Right? Like, oh, man. That, that should be in the Bible. <laughs> and... Uh, Right? And, and, and our, our relationships, the Lord God has a lot of verses talking about how we handle our relationships. Amen? That's so clear. Our self-identity. Right? We were created in God's image for crying out loud. Right? So all these things that we are thinking, that we are going to prioritize them uh, later. You know, what happens when we prioritize them over God, but the Lord God is telling us, come on, seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. You're thinking by, by not prioritizing God that you are able to handle all these things. Well, you are in the wrong. Right? And I'll prove that to you according to God's word in a little bit. So those who are going to sleep, right, wake up. Because you might miss the blessing. Mm. And those who talk a lot during worship service, be quiet. Right? Today you listen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5.17. So what is the meaning of being in the kingdom of God? Look in verse 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. What's the point there? here? 5, 14 says that we, that we who, had, who had believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? That we are now living in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says that we might live our lives for the one who had died for us. You have no right to over your own life anymore when you surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you getting this? But you know, our Lord God is a benevolent, generous, and wonderful, and good God. And not only that, He is a good Father. Everything that He tells you, it might be hard, it might be difficult, and tell you the Christian life is not difficult. I don't agree with that. The Christian life is impossible. 
The Christian life is impossible. But when you surrender to the Lord God, when you prioritize what He is telling you, when you follow Him, when you take all, all your ideas away and take what God is telling you, this is what's going to happen. You are now a new creature. You're not living for your own anymore. You're living for God, for the one who had died for you. And listen, now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ. And now that you are reconciled with Christ, He has given you the ministry of reconciliation. It's not enough that we, oh, I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved, you know. And we are singing all these songs, right? But the Lord God is telling you, that's not enough that you are happy that you were saved. Amen, I'm going to heaven. That's not enough because while you are here, the Lord committed to you, 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 you. And all of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the ministry of reconciliation, right? People are going to go to hell. The Lord God has used you to become a person who can tell them their soul. Hmm. Next one, look at what the Lord God says. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Right? Tap the person beside you. Tell them, you're an ambassador for Christ. As though God were pleading through us. Yeah, come on, ambassadors. And look at what the Lord God says furthermore. As though, as if the Lord God were pleading through us, through you, through me. And he's telling the whole world, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He could have used angels. But angels wouldn't understand the meaning of salvation. He could have used, you know, just pastors and leaders. But the Lord God is telling us, you and I, all of us together, right? Your life has a message. And next one. Oh. There's another verse. I erased it. Mm -hmm. Right, Acts 1, 8. Sorry. I erased that verse right now, when, maybe when I was formatting. Acts 1 8. And we are all familiar with that. The Lord God said, and you will have power. Right? The verse before that, the Lord Jesus Christ was asked, Lord, when are you going to come back? Are you going to set up your kingdom? The Lord Jesus Christ actually told them, you know, these things, you know, belong to the Father. So don't think about the seasons and times. And here, there are times that we are preoccupied. Lord, are you going to come? Lord, are you going to come? And it's okay. And I love eschatology or the study of the future also. I love that. I actually went to an adult Sunday school when I was 12 years old because I got intrigued with that. I love that topic. But here's what the Lord God is telling you. We study and do nothing. The Lord God is telling us it's good that we are understanding the times. But remember, the days are evil. So the Lord God redeemed the time. How? Be an ambassador. And in Acts 1 8, the Lord God says, You are going to obtain power when the Holy Spirit is come. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has already come. When you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit indwells you. And now you have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And He says, And you shall be my witnesses. You're an ambassador, you're a witness. And what's the meaning of a witness? You have a testimony. You are somebody who testifies about whom? About Jesus Christ. About Jesus Christ. Now, Pastor, ikaw na lang yan. Right? You were trained to do that. Right? You went to Bible school, you know, and four years. But let me tell you, you know, that even pastors forgot, a lot of pastors forgot this. I myself had been a victim of that because I tried to manage the church. You know, I tried to manage the church trying to, the men's ministry, the women's ministry, the youth ministry, the children's ministry, the missus ministry. You know, all these ministries, and we are going, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening in the church. Everybody's busy, but nobody's happy. And what's actually, we're, we're happy actually. We love the company of one another. But then the, the question is, Lord, are you happy? Lord, are you happy? This is what happened to the Israelites. Did you notice? They were going on with their everyday lives. 
but they forgot to build the temple. In our case, that is the kingdom of God. Now listen, we just love to sing that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Come on now. And all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Just not just that we are saying that in our hearts, but we are living it with our lives. Mm. Tapos na yung message, ano? Tapusin na natin. Enough. All right, hindi, kailangan ko pa kayong saktan eh. Right. Okay, so here. Here are excuses. Why isn't this happening in most churches? In, and even maybe in our cell groups. In our cell groups, you know? Um, uh, for, for, for a while, we are glad with the things that are happening in our church, in our cell groups. But we kind of like, Post, right? And here are our, our, our excuses for not building the kingdom of God, by not sharing the gospel, by not teaming up in order to win people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, we're waiting for the right time. Pastor, hindi pa panahon. Right? Ang nag-disciple sa'yo, hindi si Jesus. Ang nag-disciple sa'yo, si Wally Badyola. Mm-hmm. Tama ba? Apelido niya? Wally Badyola. Yung talaga, ano, anyway, ang nagpunan sa'yo si Jose, saka si Wally, may tamang panahon. We believe that, that there is time for everything. But the time of salvation, the Bible says, is now. Right? We're waiting for the right time. What time are you waiting for? But tell you, waiting for the right time, the right time does not come. The right time will not come. Next one, I'll take care of my households or slash my affairs first. Hmm. Right? I'll take care of my my household or my affairs first. Right? As if you really have control. Right? How many of you, you have experienced that, you know, all of a sudden in a day, you got fired from your job? Hmm. Or you, you got, a, what do you call that? You got laid over? Right? How many of you had experienced had experience that your company had to close? How many of you had actually, you know, your boss had to tell you that um, they are going to they're going to actually uh, uh, reduce the amount that they're giving to you or the days that you are working, right? Everything is under God's control. God can take that away from you or God can bless you with so much more. Hmm? Are you following this? Right? I'll take care of my... The Lord God wants you to take care of your household. But the thing is, if God is outside that, the Lord God says, those who build their house, if the Lord God is not in it, you build it in vain. You build it in vain. And you might be telling me, Pastor, how about those uh, pastor families that had kids that are rebellious? Right? And we have all these excuses, but tell you, right, if uh, uh, the parents are really following the Lord God, the Lord God will eventually take care of that. One of those really a great examples is Franklin Graham. He resented the ministry of his father. He became a rebel. He became a drug addict as a matter of fact. But his parents didn't stop praying for him. You know what the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go and when he is old. Through the example of his parents, it's not just teach, it's train. Right? Franklin Graham for a while really veered away from the Lord. Right? But then he cannot get away from that. And now he is the one who is the president and the speaker for the Billy Graham crusade. Hmm. Right? So next, next one, it is this. Oh, God will understand. God understands. Amen. I believe that. God will still love you. God understands. But the question is, do you understand? That when you don't prioritize the kingdom of God, the very things that you want to hold, you lose grip of those. And the result that you are looking for, it's not there. How many of us that we are, we are given this excuse, I'm, you know, you know um, because you know, Pastor, I'm, I'm a single mom or I'm a single dad. 
You know, I had to have, to have all these jobs, you know, to take care of my family. But all of a sudden, right, you don't have any relationship with your kids anymore. Your job became a hindrance to what you want to build in your life. Hmm. Look at what the Lord God says. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet in verse 3 saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses? Ang gaganda ng bahay niyo. Well protected. You had well protected your houses. And this temple lie in ruins. Hmm. The house of the Lord lie in ruins. You take care of your affairs. But then how's your cell group? Cell leaders. Right? You are taking of your affairs, your household. You have paneled houses. But how is your cell group? So the Lord God is asking me the same thing. How is the church? Are we pursuing God's kingdom? Am I taking care of you the way I should be taking care of you? And for those who are not leaders yet, are you participating? Are you cooperating? Doing the kingdom of God with you? Are you following this? Because we can be so used to see that the house of the Lord is in ruins. We are people who can, we desire something, but we can be comfortable with the mediocre. What's the meaning of mediocre? Walang standard. Are you following this? Di ba? Pag nasanay ka na ng walang standard, you don't mind anymore. But the Lord God is telling us, watch, is my house being built? That's the question. And look at what the Lord God says. Consider your ways. Think. Right? Top the person beside you. Right? Lord God says, consider your ways. Check. Right? Hashtag heart check. Yan yun. Hashtag heart check. Number two. Our treatment of God's house affects the progress of our own house. Our treatment of God's house affects the progress of our own house. Our treatment of God's kingdom affect, affects our affairs. Mm. Does God care? Does God care for you? I don't hear you. Does God care for you? All right. And here's what's happening. How many of you, there are a lot of times that I ask you this question. How many of you that you are um, laboring, you are working so hard, and you even got two jobs, some of you even had three jobs, but at the end of the day, you still feel that there, you still lack. It's not enough. Come on. Right? How many have experienced that? Right? But how, do you know? But there are people in our congregation that to compare, they don't earn a lot. But it is amazing that these people have peace. And one of those is Ives. Hmm. If you hear the testimony of Eves, there should be the, the soundtrack of Maala Alam Mukaya. He already forgot how a $100 looks. <laughs> right? If Eves is working for the church, right? And, 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 and apparently, you know, and he's not really getting a lot. But here's actually what's amazing about this guy. He even treats my, my two boys. Right? Nililibre. And dapat ang maglibre sa kanya yung dalawang anak ko na. <laughs> you know, in that. Right? And there are people that you you are going to find out. Karen, you will never you will never guess how much she makes. Why? Because she is just, you know, generous. She's just generous. And it is amazing with that there are times that you already have enough, but you still feel you lack. But there are people that you wonder, how can they do that? It is because the Lord God stands on their behalf. And look at what, the, what Haggai actually says there in verse 6. You have sown much. Ang dami mo nang ginawa. Ang dami mo nang tinanim. Right? And look at what it says. And it brings in little. Underline that on your Bible. Right? Bring in little. Next one. You eat, but you do not have enough. Ako yan. Right? Kain kang kain, hindi ka nabubusog. Mm. Right? You drink, 
but you are not filled with drink. So in other versions, but you don't get drunk. Right? The next one is you clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. Hmm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with oath. Diba? We actually have a saying in Filipino, butas ang bulsa. Sandali lang po ah. May tumutulog. Naririnig nyo? O nga eh. Saan yun? May naririnig ako eh, tumutugtog. Sorry. Nung sinabi ko ito na ano eh, dapat si Ives may background music. Tumugtog. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, come on. Now, did you see all this? Did you see all this? You tried. You prioritized that. And let me ask you, the Lord God says, and let me ask you, do you have enough? Never enough. Never enough. Diba? Right? Yan ang theme song of people who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ but does not prioritize the kingdom. Never enough. Yan. Right? Yan. Look, butas. You remember? Dati walang bangko eh. What they do is that they keep it in a bag. Remember the holder of the bag? That means treasure. The holder of the bag for the apostles, you know? Si Judas. Treasurer. Ano nangyari? Butas. Ang laki na ng sweldo mo, bakit kulang pa? Lord, siguro pag umabot yung sweldo ko ng ganito, enough na. Tapos din kataka naman, Lord, hindi pala, never enough. Are you getting this? Why? It's not because of natural reasons. That's supernatural. Remember, we are cursed. The thorns and the thistles you eat through the sweat of your brows. The ground that you plant on. Your jobs are actually part yan ng curse if we are not going to surrender it to the Lord. But the Lord God wants to bless us with our jobs. Amen. The Lord God wants to bless our jobs. Kaya ka na naging niya doon. The reason you are there because the Lord God wants you to be a blessing to those who are around you. Eh kaso pinaprioritize mo yung trabaho mo. Right? How many of you actually... Yeah, how many of you, sayang Lord, wala na naman sila. Right, how many of you actually went to me and told me, Pastor, pag-pray mo lang to. Pag nakuha yung trabaho na to. Pastor, talagang tatama na yung aking tights. Yan. Tapos talagang, Pastor, bibigyan ko ng extra sa'yo. Yan, and all, and all these promises. Kaya pag kayo magpapapray ng ganyan, huwag nyo na sabihin yan kasi nag-disappoint lang ako. Tapos bibigyan ko yung $10. Kulang pa pang Starbucks. Di ba? Tapos then after a while, you, you, I'm going to miss you in church and then you're going to tell me, what happened to you, sister? What happened to you, brother? Eh, pastor, yung trabaho ko. Na. And the Lord God says, sige, unahin mo. And but, the, you know, what worries me is not just about because we don't have enough. But my problem is that because some of you actually feel that you don't have enough time. Some of you feel that you don't have enough energy. And some of you, right, you know that this is also affecting your relationship with your wife, with your husband, with your children, and with your other people who are important to you. Why? Because you have to work, 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 work. And look at what the Lord God says. That says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple. It's time to build the house of the Lord that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. Building God's house gives pleasure and glory to God. Advancing God's kingdom gives pleasure and glory to God. When we don't do this, we displease God and we are actually not glorifying. Or is there a word opposite of glorifying? Right? Well, the word exalt, there's the opposite of that. It's insult. Exalt is to bring up, insult is to bring down. Right? If we are not prioritizing the kingdom of God, the Lord God is telling us that we are not giving Him glory. And here's another warning for all of us. 
That's why butas ang bulsa. Right? Why? Malakay tuto. Hmm. Right? Kung di pa kayo tinamaan doon, dito, matakot kayo. Yung mga wala rito, tag nyo lahat. Yung mga kaaway nyo, tag nyo rin. Yan. Tapos tagay nyo, sabi sa Bible kasi, love your enemies. Yan. But here's the reason, if you will not hear, and if you will not take it to heart, to give glory to my name. Listen. If you don't take care of God's house, right, we are refraining the glory of God. We are displeasing God, says the Lord of hosts. I will send curse upon you. Aray. Bakit butas? Bakit kahit anong sikap? Kapos pa rin. Isang kahig, isang tugan. Why? Because remember, because of sin, we are all cursed. Eh, Pastor Pistano na ako. There are natural consequences. And there are supernatural ones. The Lord God says, look at what He says. Yes, I have cursed them already. I will curse your blessings. How many of you that you had something that is so good at first that eventually you hated it? You thought at first it's going to bring you happiness, it's going to bring you joy, and now it, it brings you sorrow. Well, I know for, for example, I know someone, bumili ng aso. Ba't bumili ng aso para may bantay ang bahay? Ngayon, may church activity, hindi ba kalis? Bakit, Pastor? Walang maiiwan sa aso. Walang bantay. Buti si Lani, hindi alaga aso. Ang alaga ni Lani, leon. Ha? Kahit saan iwan yan. Yan. Yeah. Oh, di ba? Kaya saan mo iwan yan? Hmm. Pero may dalawang aso si Lani, kaaway ko eh. Yeah? Ang pangalan nung, nung, ano, nung babae, si Bella. Si Bella, tapos yung isa? Si Bingo. Yan. Bingo ba? Ringo? Bingo. Bingo, nakakabingo na sa akin yung dalawa eh. <laughs> right? Ewan ko ba? Basta to, malayo pa ako, narinig ko makakahul na eh. Right? Masyado akong mahal nung dalawang asong yan eh. Alright? And, uh, pero nakita ko na, no, sikreto. Kaya pala ka walang kaol, no? Kailangan pala pakainin. Hindi pinapakain ng mga amoy. No. Uh, kasi naiwan. <laughs> you know, all our reasons, there are times that it was supposed to be bringing us joy. Eventually, it brings us sorrow. Why? It is because you are not doing it for God's glory. I'm getting tempted to actually hit on yung mga boyfriend-girlfriend relationships. Pero sabi ni Lord Wag, abangan niyo yung susunod na message. Look at what the Lord God says. Let's go back to Haggai verse 9. 1-9. You look for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, Look here, it didn't say it was blown away. Alam nyo, this, these are the parts of the Bible that modern Christianity doesn't like. The Lord, oh, the, oh, mabait ang Lord. God is love. He's not going to be like that. He understands that he's going to be like that. What do you say to The Lord God, because He loves you, papalukin ka niya. Hmm. Marami sa atin, you know, marami sa atin pinagpala. Praise the Lord God. Yung iba sa atin, pinagpalo. At in, ang problema nito, hindi natututo. Yeah, for those who are, yeah, there are a lot of us that are being blessed and there are a lot of us that needs to be chastised. And but the problem is we don't know. That's the point of this. And look at what the Lord God furthermore says, you know, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins. Ouch. While every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you with all the dew, the earth with all its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock and all the labor of your hands. 
I've read this before, but this is the only time that I actually preach on it and study it. Mga kapatid, prioritize God's kingdom. If you don't, everything that you do actually does not make sense. In the long analysis, what you are holding on to, you have no control over it. Instead, give it to the one who controls everything, our sovereign God. Does that mean everything will work the way you want? No. But let me tell you, when the Lord God allows calamity in your life, it is in order to prepare you for a greater blessing. You might lose a job. Right? But the Lord God is preparing something better for you. It doesn't mean a better job, but it means a better life. Greater blessings. And all these things shall be added unto you. Type the person beside you, tell them that, come on, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. Yes. Matthew 6, 31, let's read the context of this verse. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Eh, tayo mga Pilipino, mahilig tayo sa tatak, eh, di ba? Yeah? Mga Pilipino, mahilig tayo sa tatak, right? As a matter of fact, I praise the Lord God for what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing an Oscar de la Renta. Yeah? And uh, I'm wearing a Lacoste, right, inside. I'm wearing Levi's. And I'm wearing a rock cord for my shoes, right? My medias, it's my kids' medias. Mm. And for what's inside, YC. <laughs> right? So in all the, you know, mahilig tayo sa ganyan. But do you know what the Lord God is telling us? You know what's really, what really we need to wear? The armor of God. Because every day is a fight. Every day, we're going to have a series about that. Right? Every day is a fight. It's a spiritual warfare. You fight you fight for your kids. You fight for your wife. You fight for those who are in your cell group. You fight for your community. You fight for your church. You fight for your interests, but you cannot fight alone. Right? The Lord God is telling you, right, who can be against you when you are with the Lord? Right? We are more than conquerors, but look at what the Lord God says. For all these things, those who do not have God seek. For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Ilan sa inyo yung pag natutulog kayo sa gabi ang iniisip niyo na bukas? Di ba? Ano kakainin namin bukas? Yeah. Ano isusot ko bukas? Naisot ko na to last year. Right. Sino sa inyo naka, that you had experience? Nag, nag spring cleaning kayo and you found some of your clothes? Meron pang tag. Di ba yung damit nyo is like 5 years ago, 10 years ago, hindi na nga kasya sa iyo eh. Di ba? Di ba yung pantalon na pinili mo? Di ba hindi mo na maiso? Kasya na lang, hindi na pwede sa pinti, sa braso na. <laughs> right? 34. If you understand the meaning of this and if you live by this, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Are you a warrior? Right? You know, ano antidote sa worry? Is to become a warrior. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. I was talking with someone this week. And ang tanong niya, Pastor, hindi mo ba, di ba wise din na pagandaan mo yung mga anak mo for the future? Kasi wala po kaming educational plan. Hmm. And I'm not advocating this. And kami po mag actually, we don't have life insurance yet. Dahil because uh, when, uh, I remember not too long ago, right, I only have enough. Because sabi ko sa ngayon ganun, tao dito, alam nyo, ang tao dyan, first world problems. Sino sa Pilipinas ang meron ko yung education plan? Hmm. Chiri ka lang. Hmm. Mayaman to eh. Yayamanin to eh. Artistahin pa. Sino yan? Honestly, sino sa inyo mayroong education plan sa Philippines? Na, almost everyone, almost everyone, we finish college nang walang education plan. Are you, are you getting this? 
right? But here, of course, we understand that when they finish, the applause. But praise the Lord God. Muli. I'm telling you, I prayed for that, Lord. Dalangin ko because I know that I will not have enough. But I know that you will have enough. Let my kids, you know, Lord, I pray that you're going to bless them with scholarship. Oh, wala nang tuition fee ngayon sa New York, di ba? Kaya lang, under 125,000 ba? 125,000, then your kids are going to be scholars. Problema ko na ngayon kasi lagpas na kami ng 125,000 na yun. 126,000 na kami. And I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm just fooling your legs. You don't know. I don't know. Right? But but God, you know, and there's no way. Do you know that even this, alam niyo bang ayaw kong kumuha ng kotse? There was a time. You know, actually, Ate Medi approached me, Pastor. Nag-usap-usap kami mga ladies. Just living word this. Nag-usap-usap kami mga ladies. You know, pag na namin, and then we will give you down payment for your car. Siyempre, tuwa ako, down payment, down payment. And then I asked Ate Medi, eh, paano po yung monthly? Because I don't have enough for a new car. You know, having a new car, that's gonna be like around $400, $500, tapos plus yung insurance. Di ba? I don't have enough. Never enough. But do you know what? Do you know what? The Lord Himself made a way I finally got a certified pre-owned car. Nabagsakan ng bagyo. Kasi sabi ni Lord, sinabi ko na sa'yo, Ronald, hindi yan ang gusto kong kunin mo. Ang gusto kong kunin mo, bago. Oh. And because of that, ang gusto ko pa rin, certified pre-owned. Pagdating namin sa May Hudson, Toyota, sa, sa New Jersey, walang, walang certified pre-owned. Why? Because lahat yun, binagyo. The only choice that I have is a new van. Kaya ang pangalan ng van namin is si Light Delight. Because delight yourself in the Lord and He shall give you the desires of your heart. It's not even my desire. You, do you know, I can relate yung, yung sabi nila, one of the, the happy, a happy smell or happy scent is the scent of a new car. I couldn't relate because I never experienced having a new car. Now I can already relate. But I still love, I still love the scent of an old car better. I said, you know why? Because that means that that car was already used a lot for ministry. Mm, in, in, our, in our case. But pa tayo napunta dyan. Right? Because, again, you try to hold all things together, you cannot. But surrender that to the Lord, prioritize Him, He is able to hold things better. Mm. May extra pa. Stop worrying. Mm. If you're going to ask me, do I worry for my kid's future? Again, tinikip po naman namin yan. It's wise. Right? If you can, put that. That's really wise. Kasi magagamit din nila yan eventually. But here's the thing. I would rather make sure that my kids are really going to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And they had seen miracles after miracles after miracles in our own lives. And we praise the Lord God for that. Kahit parking. Kahit parking. You know, my kids had experienced that, that they would pray for parking. And right after they pray, meron ng parking. Right? Pag walang parking kasi may kasalanan sa, merong may kasalanan sa amin. Eh, mga bata, inosente. So, sino may kasalanan? Si pastora. <laughs> right? And true, right? There are times that we are going to pray for something because we are looking forward to that. Right? And then it comes. The Lord God surprises. Right? Do I worry about things in the future? They're still there. But I submit them to the Lord God. I have no control over all these things. I don't even have control about my life if I'm still alive tomorrow. But I know that today, I will live my life for Jesus Christ. So, and here's the thing. Uh, we are not just taking care of today. We are, to take care of God's house is our last point, is to take care of our legacy. Look at verse 12. Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Jehoshadak, Right? The high priest with all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God. In the words of Haggai, the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the presence of the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, spoke the Lord's message to the people, saying, I am with you, says the Lord. Right? Remember, he's actually mentioning the fathers. Right? And Zerubbabel and Joshua had great fathers who had trained them in the ways of the Lord. But here... Right? In Exodus chapter 20, verse 5, we are warned 
and we are also being prepared. Exodus chapter 20 verse 5 it says, You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. This is talking about idols. Do not make any image out of anything. And do not bow before them, the Lord God says. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Right? Of those who hate me. But listen, in but showing mercy or but showing love to thousand generations. To those who love me and keep my commandments. Following the Lord God today. I am not, this is not just for my kids. This is for their kids. This is for their kids' kids. This is for their kids' 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 kids. And their kids' 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 kids. Diba? Right? And ngayon, tawag nyo, tungtua tayo sa stimulus, diba? Right? Tungtua tayo sa stimulus. Alam nyo kung sino magbabayad yan? Diba? Right? Yan, your kids and their kids. And then, but you know, but even if the Lord God even handles not just today, not just the future, but future generations. I am following God, not just because I want to be blessed. Because I want the future Ramirez generations to be blessed. Mm. Right? And si Mai, kinokondisyon ko na. Sabi ko, nak, hindi ka pwedeng mag-boyfriend ng ang gap nyo less than 10 years. Mm. Bakit? Kasi ang legal dito, ang legal is 18. Para makapag-boyfriend ka na, ano, di ba? ng ganong kalaki. So sabi ko, na pag 18 yung boyfriend mo, ibig sabihin, dalawa lang yan. Doktor na yun. O kaya, pastor. So tinanong ko siya, anong gusto mo mapangasawa, doktor o pastor? Sabi niya, pastor. Nak, doon ka na sa doktor. <laughs> <laughs> Tapos mag-pray mo, yung doktor maging pastor. <laughs> you know, that there, I'm thinking about my kids' future. But I have no control over that. But God does. But not only my kids. Generations, mga kapatid. Thousand generations. Are you following this? Now let's go back and let's finish this message kasi meron ako ipapresent sa inyo today. Right? And so the Lord, look at what the Lord God says there in verse 14. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah. Ano meaning yan? And the Lord made them excited. Mm. You know, ilan sa inyo nakakaramdam pa kayo ng kilig pag tinitingnan niyo yung asawa niyo? Mm. You know, how many of you that when you look at your kids, it really gives you like that joy? Di ba? Namasaya ka. Yung mga apo niyo, the things that you are doing. Now, let me ask you the same thing. How about your cell group? How about your church? Right? How about your brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ? How about evangelism? How about sharing the gospel? How about missions? How about winning the world for the, for the Lord Jesus Christ? And here it is, the Lord God is telling us, Stir up. Alam nyo, kung wala na yung joy of salvation nyo, build the house of the Lord God. And that's what he is saying. So the Lord God made them excited. Yan. Right? Alam niyo yung iba na nakikiyahe? Pero, have you ever, ever experienced that hindi kayo makadate? Lahat nagyayahe? Tumatuwa lahat, no? Tumatuwa lahat, everybody was like just so happy. Tapos ikaw hindi mo alam kung ano nangyayari. And you were just like, <laughs> hindi, ikaw, ikaw pala yung pinapalak, baka, you know? Kasi nakabukas si sipper mo. Alright? And, 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 and all that, no, you, have you ever experienced that? That you were in a crowd and you don't know what what's happening? There are times that I feel that church is not our church. I praise the Lord God that we are. We, we, we had improved through the years. But that's how I feel with, the, with Christianity. When the angels were rejoicing because a soul got saved. The, the, all all the, the saints are like, what's happening? A soul got saved. It never gets us excited anymore. But do you know the only, the only uh, mention in the Bible that there's rejoicing in heaven. Right? May party sa langit. Right? Over a soul. Church, we need to be get we need to get excited about this. Advance the kingdom of God and look at what it says. In the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehoshadab, the high priest, in the spirit of all the remnant of the people, they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added 
undo it. You know. Right? Do you want a life like that? Build God's house. So, what's our takeaway for today? Ito ang ating application. Number one, we are going to go back in building up our soul groups. Nangyari, we had gone, gone back to our programs. Right? I'm excited with the things that we are doing. Pero, ang dami na naman nating activity. Pero we are not really doing what the Lord God wants us to do. So we are going to take care of our soul groups. That's why what we are doing right now, what we are doing right now, this message only came to me two weeks ago. But we are already like, you know, pushing our training this afternoon. We are going to resume training. Ang topic natin this afternoon, how to have a dynamic cell group. Ah, ano sabi ng dynamic? Yan, sumasabog. <laughs> dynamite pala <and> dynamite. <laughs> All right? So, we have to have a dynamic cell group. I'm excited to teach you about that today. And here's the thing. Right? So, we take care of our cell groups. Number two, we are going to love and support our cell leaders. Mamahalin ulit natin yung ating susuportahan. Ha? Ano yan? Ano yung kanta na yan? Yaya ka tinga. Anong kanta yan? Ah, alagaan ka. Yan, ang kanta ng mga cell group leaders. Hmm. Right? So we are going to take care of our cell groups again. And in, and in of course, ahead of that, we are going to take care of our church. Right? And our cell groups, again, our church, we have the macro church and we have the micro church. Right? So again, uh, so come and follow. Mahirap mag-follow if you don't show up. Hmm. Yeah. So are we still going to do um, online? Yeah, from time to time, hindi natin may iwasan yan. It's still part of that. But I pray that you are going to meet in person already. Ibang dynamics. Mahirap mag-bonding ng panay, panay mukha lang. Di ba? Ng panay, panay video. Hmm. It's meant, it already... It already, uh, uh, kahit si Elon Musk, is already requiring his people to come. Right? Elon Musk na yan, napaka-radical ng tao niya. Right? So what, 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 why? Because our productivity, right? Our productivity, progress, and our uh, prosperity is affected by that. Hmm. Alright? So, in the end, and that's our message for today, in Jesus' name, Amen. And now for the second message. Right? For those who are online, don't leave yet. Yeah. This is the part that's really making me nervous. Um, several months ago, I talked with the deacons. And I told the deacons, mga kapatid, I think the Lord God is telling me, we need to get the bigger room. When we talk, when we talk, I actually had, con- I actually had, uh, um, meron akong strategy because this is another $6,000. Where are we going to get $6,000? Right? We're already paying $6,000 plus utilities and all. We are already around $8,000 na yung ginagasas natin sa kabila. Getting this, we'll be doubling that, you know, so we're talking about around $15 a month. Right? Where are we going to get this? Right? So I talked with the deacons but I told them I believe that the Lord God is already telling me. Kaya naman tigas ang ulo ko. Why? Because there's somebody who should be renting with us, but they decided not to pursue, na inip. Right? Before we are able to get that. There's a church that is going to, to be renting from us, I mean. Right? And I even just charged them, because they are paying around 3000 3500 I even just told them, you know, just 2000 And I believe that we can manage the rest. But it didn't push through. It fell through and sabi ko, Lord, wala kayong pagkukunan. I became afraid. So I repent for that. I repent about that. So a month ago, I again talked with the deacons. And I said, the conviction is there. And I'll talk with Kevin. But I told them that this is going to be my proposal to Kevin. Pag hindi siya pumayag, that's a signal it's not time yet. But you know what the Lord God is telling me? Right? I don't have to negotiate with Kevin because God is going to provide. Hmm. So all of a sudden, right, so I talked with Kevin. I didn't get what I wanted, what Ronald wanted, right, the their negotiation because I, I don't want us to be on the losing end also. Time church, right? So again, this is Ronald's ways, right? So all throughout this, so that's around, you know, a month or, you know, 
for two months and I talked with the deacons. And I know the Lord God was telling me, right, do it. Do it. It's coming out in my, my devotions. And do you know, a year ago, the Lord God actually had a word for us. And that's why we believe, right? Some of you are actually hearing that from us, that we are going to buy a house. Hmm. Right? Meron na kasi ngayon yung mga, alam niyo yung mga shed? Yung mga shed. Meron na ngayon shed na ngayon na malalaki. Na ilalagay namin sa likod ni Lalani. Yung mga ganun. Yeah, tapos yung mga bata nakasabit pag natutulog. Right? But kidding aside, having all that, I was, honestly, I, I, I take risks. Pero calculated risks. Eh, ito wala sa kalkulasyon ko. We're gonna have a hard time. I don't, and you know, of course, I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about, you know, um, even the, the, the amount that our coaches are, are getting. Right? Wala pa yan eh. I'm already thinking of that. And so I said, Lord, magsiswell yung aming budget and all. We tried to compute, but if Kevin didn't agree, we're going to hard time. Because I got it to a break even of what we're going to do. But praise the Lord God. Do you know our giving had, had increased this year? Do you know last year ang average natin is 3,200? Nasa si Des, Right? We are only getting around 3,200 a, a week last year. But praise the Lord God. Um, John Ives. Ives, how much are we getting average right now? We are now, we, yeah, we are getting 3,500 to 4,500. Right? Where did that come from? I don't know. But when we obey the Lord God, the Lord God just, you know, gives resources. And do you know that we actually delayed the, 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 um, the, the launching of Bright Spot? You know, because we, we are thinking of like, you know, um, um, we need the money. But the Lord, praise the Lord God that we had a starting, starting, um, what you call that, budget for, for, for Bright Spot is like around 8,000 from you guys and from other sources. Do you know the 8,000 is already gone? Right? But we praise the Lord God because God, again, is providing for Bright Spot. And here, right? Um, 2019, remember? Our anniversary, I talked to you, and it's going to be shown in our screen. Right. Yeah, you see that? For seven years. When we turn seven, go up. Oh, yep. Dream one. No, the dream one. Oh, that's the dream one. This already dream two. Right. Let's just stick with this. Let's just stick with this one. Right. Um. Okay, can you show the picture with uh, no, before this? Can you show the picture with Mom, uh, no, Mommy Alice and Auntie Susan? Yeah, show that. This is 2019. We've been praying for the, this building. That's not Mommy Susan. Yon. Right? Lato wala pang walls. I brought Nani Susan and Mommy Alice here, right? Because because the contact is Kevin. But Kevin didn't know that before he offered this building, that was the time that he offered us this building. But Kevin didn't know that before he offered to us this building, we've been praying for this since March 2018. I don't know who pray for this. Right? Si Susan sa si Jonathan, I have the proof. Right? Because yung picture may date. Right? We started praying for that. But here's actually there. Yeah, no? Yeah, may plywood pa pala. No, kasama namin sila no, during the time. But look here. Right? Our dream number one is ourselves. So we are going to continue taking care of our cell groups. Pa, pa, invest yung, yung cells. Palagay. Jaran! Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, you know, and now meron na tayong elevator. Hmm. Okay? And yung elevator natin na-stuck na twice. Right? Sino may kasalanan na? Oh, next one. Next one. This one. Right? Now we have the Bright Spot Community Center that we have launched two weeks ago. Ah, uh, no, two months ago. Ah, uh, two months na ba? One and a half months. Right? And but the third layer, now we have a dojo. 
It's not legit yet, but at least maluwang na siya. Hindi na kami kinakabahan na baka tamaan namin yung poste. Remember, it was sa may ilalim ng, uh, ng undercroft. Mag, may magti-take down, lahat kami nakaabang. Right? Baka tumama yung ulo sa poste. But now, we, the Lord God is giving us that, right? Just let it stay. But lumilipat? Identical difficulty. Right? Now, three weeks ago, we realized this. I forgot about that. That what we are really aiming for is not just for the dojo, not just for the music training, not for the ministry th- th- stuff that we want, but here it is. We want to have a student center. Having a student center, those two um, rooms are not enough anymore. Mm, the office and then, and you have you seen, remember a month ago, may nagbari lang dito sa baba? May nagbari lang dito sa baba? And now the Lord God is also giving us another opportunity. This tomorrow until Wednesday, we are uh, until Thursday, we are going to have a group of high school students, um, 12 plus yung kanilang chaperones that are going to minister right here with us, right? And, uh, and all these opportunities. So three weeks ago, I sat down with the staff and I told them the Lord God is just telling me because this is the time that I actually had this in my devotion. So I mean, the message is about, again, about God's kingdom. But the way that the Lord God had convicted, convicted me about this is because this is still the house of the Lord, right? This is God's place. This is God's house. This is his ministry. And, and there I put ministry center, but now it's not. It, this is a mission center. We are doing the work of the Lord. But then the Lord God had convicted me. The student center will never happen if we are not going to get this place. Hmm. So we already talked, right? Just imagine this. There will be an arcade here. Yeah. Right? And there will be a, there will be a, a basketball hoops, billiards, right? We are going to have we are going to have a, um, ano to? We're going to have a, um, game consoles, right? With the kids that are coming here. Why? Because in order for the kids who are there to come in and for us to plant the seeds of the gospel in their hearts, right? So what does that mean? The only way that it can happen is we get this. Finally. Mm. All right? So, finally the conviction, you know, I already listened to the Lord. I repented. I said, Lord, we will build your house. I thought it was this. I never touched this. I never touched this, uh, this, uh, this um, uh, um, PowerPoint. This was what I presented to you during the anniversary. Remember, for those who are already here, right, in 2019. But there's dream number three. The best pa, the, the notes. Right? There's, that, there's three dreams. And uh, this dream number two, the cell groups and building up one another, that's dream number one. And we praise the Lord God for that. But we didn't hit the target yet. We are praying during the time that we want 33 cell groups. Right? So now, dream number three, that's in the notes. Yeah, your notes. Then, uh, there's like... There are two files that I sent. Yan den, yung light, yung, let's dream again. Isang PowerPoint yan, isang ano. You don't have it? It's a doc, it's a document. Is that there? Okay, ito lang. Right? Aim the camera here. Which? Aim the camera here. Alright. Well, the third one is that I put there is the Laika's Biblical right, Training Center. And okay, that is, go down. This is the last piece of the dream. 
But do you know, so this actually, these are going to be, so our, I, I was now working with Global Life University, and LightCast is going to be the campus in New York, right? It is a hybrid program from, from associates until doctorate. So LightCast, we are going to be part of Global Life University. We are hosting it. So those, and I'm now working with them to take that our training will actually have a one-year certificate equivalent, right? Because in ano, sa Bible school po, meron po tayong tinatawag na basic Bible course. So when you finish up to Destiny 3, so I still have to submit all the papers, but it is there. Actually, Dr. Greg Lyons went, and now I am part of the faculty, and um, what official with that is that I need to record the, the lesson that I'm going to teach. So, ang pastor nyo, international instructor na, ha? Ah, yan ang ano. Ah, pag nagawa natin, yan. And they asked me, what do I want to teach? I said, I'm gonna speak what is in my heart. So I'm, I'm teaching one course of evangelism in the undergraduate programs, and I'm going to teach evangelism also. And I'm taking that evangelism as warfare for evangelism as warfare for uh, the master of program. That's actually, you know, so there, and we thank the Lord God for that. These dreams, and then another one, I was writing in 2009, it's not there anymore. Um, oh, did I send that? What's the last file that I sent? Right? No, no, not, 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 not that, yeah. Um, prepare that one. In 2009, I was writing just like, you know, things that are in my mind. And one of those is that this, this was part of that dream. The Bible school, okay now, right? That's 2009. And I found it in my nose because I was preparing for Acts, right? And all these were there. And one of the things that I put there is that Lightcast will also become a church multiplication center. And every Tuesday, do you know that every Tuesday there are pastors, including our coaches, that are studying here every Tuesday. And even that, I didn't know that I wrote that 2009. And the Lord God is fulfilling these dreams. Amen? Now I have another dream. You want to you wanna hear? You want to hear the, 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 the new dream? That like us, we are going to have our own building in five to ten years' time. Hmm. Yep, we are praying for that. Right? But let's take care of what we have today. All right, so now we computed. Um, I actually computed wrongly, but we want to secure, at least for us to be able like, to handle all of this, we want to secure the amount here. For the other one, we don't have problems anymore with that. Right? But this one, we need to prepare for this. So that's another 6,000. So we want to secure 10, 10 months, right? that we are not going to have headaches for our rent here. So that's, that means the 60,000. Right? And then plus the down payment, that's 18000 That's 18000 So all in all, and of course the repairs and all the other stuff, right? Uh, it, it amounted to 128000 So let's close it to 130000 right? So I'll show you something that how we are going to do this. Right? The, the boxes. Jaran, Today... We are going to be on a faith raising journey, right? This is not fundraising, but this is raising our faith. So how do we do this? Each box, atas, uh, right? Each box, you see that? One box is equivalent to one thousand hmm. dollars. So all these boxes is a. Uh, uh, there's an extra line because some some of you might be convicted more than that. All right, so we'll do it. So each box is $1,000, right? So you pray, Lord, how many boxes are we going to fill? Right? Right? Even our kids, our kids are going to be separate. I'm going to challenge them. But here, for example, I pledge, right? I pledge um, two boxes. So I'm going to sign two boxes, right? There's going to be, we're going to have this printed big so you can sign it. And that's a pledge. The meaning of that is that you're going to pray for that. So let the Lord God lay it in your heart. Right? 
let it be scary. Right? So here it is. Right? Let, let, let it stay. Let it stay. Right? So one box, how much? $1,000. So you pray to the Lord. Lord, I'm going, I'm going to fill 10 boxes. How, many, how much is that? 10000 So how are you going? Lord, wala akong 10000 Right? Wala akong 10000 Lord. But I know that you can provide. But here, listen up. The 10000 that you are going to pledge, it doesn't mean that you are the one who's going to fill it alone. It means that you have friends that you know might be interested. Right? Your work. They might have a matching gift. That if you give this amount, they also match that amount for your for nonprofits. You can do that. But you are going to ask the Lord, 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 use me in order to fill these boxes. Are you getting this? But if the Lord God tells you and shows you, and I'm really excited about this, because this is not the first time that we had done this, that I had led this. Right in the Philippines, we had done this, and I've heard testimony after testimony how the Lord God miraculously provided. And one one of those, I still remember, she's already in heaven right now. Right? And uh, and, and, and um, she actually is already a single mother. Meron siyang kendihan. But the time for the pledge right, to, be, to be paid, uh, the money that she has, she needs to, to pay for the, the, the small lot that they are renting as an extension. But that Sunday, she dropped the money out of faith. The next day, for no reason at all, the owner of the lot came to her, and she already has, like, you know, um, she's going to appeal that she's going to be extended. You know what happened? Out of the blue, the lady said to her, the owner of the lot, Sabi Nay, you don't have to pay me for the next two months. For no reason at all. Right? Testimonies like that. Right? So again, so this is apart from your tights, huh? Baka, ah, compute ko na tights ko. No, this is outside your tights. Right? I'm challenging you because this is going to happen. Now, today. So what happens? Right after you sign, you know, so did you see the green? Right? Sign, it means that that is your pledge. Right? The green means that you already had dropped, that you already given the money. So, yung signed, right? Yung signed, yung, so that means this one, meron ng 1,000 na nagbigay. Alright? Mamaya, mamaya ihuhulog ko na yung 1,000. But to start with, do you know that when we got the other room, when we got the other rooms, the reason why we were able to pay that, the down payment done, because someone was challenged by the Lord to pay for that. We never challenged anybody else. But today, I'm challenging all of you. Right? We are going to secure this place. And paano, Pastor, pag may sumobra? If God is going to really like bless us a lot, ito yan, pag may sumobra, ano gagawin natin? Lahat ng sosobra, with this one, we are going to put it in our building fund. Why? Because we are aiming to buy our own building. Amen? Alright? Yeah. Mas malaki rito. Gusto natin building. Mga kasing laki ng uh, Freedom Tower. Okay na yun. Alright? And, but here, here's another thing. Right? So, uh, the boxes, we are going to fill them up. And then, and then um, sign them. And then, when you finally bring it, we color it green. Right? So, here's, here's another thing. 10% of everything that we get from this are going to be used in, for missions. We are going to bless the pastors in the Philippines. Right? So, 10%. If we get just 50,000, that's fine. We're still going to give the 5,000. Right? For missions. If we get, um, there are like, a, um, so we're raising 130,000, but there are 140 boxes. We raise, we fill this up. So, 14,000 will be used in order to bless pastors in the Philippines. Amen? Right? So, how long is the duration? How long is the duration for this? We are securing, securing 10 months, right? We're securing 10 months. So that means that you, we need to be able to pay it up in 10 months, all right? But some of you, somebody already asked me, Pastor, pedibang 12 months. That's fine. 
right? Because I know that the Lord God is going to prepare, provide for that because what is important, what the Lord God had already laid in your heart, but we need to fulfill this, right? I promise. So here, listen up, right? Pastor Michelle and I, we had already pledged 22,000, right? To start the ball rolling. So 22,000 we are giving to, to the church, right? And then um, somebody else had actually approached me this Friday, right? A couple is actually pledging $12,000 already. And this morning, I secured, again, I talked with somebody just to make sure. They are pledging $10,000. So all in all, we already have 22 plus 12. How much is that? 34. We already have 44,000 in pledges. All right? So, yan po. So, will we be able to do this? Not on our own. But I believe when you participate, God is going to show wonderful things. Right? Kung paano natin gagawin to. Are you ready, church? Huh? Right? Are you ready? Are you ready? Huh? And we are going to see, you know, every cent, right? You, we are going to see young people getting saved. Families getting rich by the scriptures. Again, through the power of the Holy Spirit, right? For the glory of God and in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right? Amen. All right? So I want you to, to I want you to, to uh, bow down your head right now and start praying. Right? If the Lord God gives you a number, take note and continue praying for that. How many boxes, Lord? That's the question. Lord, how many boxes? Right? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, you are our dream giver. You are the one who have laid, Lord God, things, Lord God, in our hearts. But we want to make sure that it had really come from you. And today, Lord God, this scares us. This also excites us, Lord God, for, for we know that when you give a dream, Lord God, you also fulfill it. Lord, you told us, Lord God, in your word, that it is you who works in us, both to desire and to do of your good pleasure. So, Lord God, we want, Lord, to glorify you. Lord, that when this thing happens, Lord, your church has a testimony that we can declare to the whole world, Lord, this is impossible, but with God, nothing, nothing, nothing is impossible. Again, Lord, Lord, again, speak to our hearts. Lay it all down. Lord, and I pray that we are going to lay it down, Lord, before you. Prayerfully. And again, Lord God, that we are going to fulfill it. Lord, again, through, this, through, this, through the strength that is coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, again, we pray for the glory of you, our Father, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.